For years, farmers have been feeding antibiotics to their animals to make them fatter faster. The only reason we use these products is because we have a huge economic advantage. The antibiotics they use are the same silver bullets that stop people from dying. Now there's a link between those drugs and the creation of an unstoppable superbug in the food that we eat. They come across the food chain and they can make people sick. Yet there's no formal testing for it. She'll be right, mate, is the Australian attitude. It ain't going to be right, it's getting worse. Tonight on Four Corners, the battle over antibiotics fed to farm animals. Should they be used? And are we prepared to pay a potentially deadly price gambling with the last silver bullets? Canberra Hospital on Tuesday, August the 19th. Inside, a middle-aged woman is recovering from kidney failure. The night before, we'd approached the hospital and the woman had given us permission to film her as part of this program. What made her different from the hundreds of other patients, the strongest antibiotics weren't working. She'd become infected with a deadly strain of bacteria, so contagious she was consigned to a special isolation ward to prevent its spread to other patients. Shortly before we were to start filming her, the woman died. Four Corners arrived just as her family learnt of the unexpected death and came to pay their last respects. How do you personally feel at the moment? Well, I think, you know, like uh, all these situations, this is obviously very sad. I mean, this is a case where somebody uh, has got multiple problems and a contributing factor has been a fact that there's a bacteria we couldn't treat adequately. So what we might do now is um, put in the body bag and... Okay. In other hospitals, her death might never have been disclosed for what it was. There is no national mandatory reporting of this infection. How she got the bug, no one is sure. Fear of the infection has forced many hospitals to keep their outbreaks quiet. Well, I think one of the reasons is that it never looks good for your hospital to know you've got these so-called superbugs and that people are having a bad outcome from it. But, now, do you, but do you think people have the right to know that? Well, I think it is a very good idea if people know that, providing we do it in a way that doesn't unfairly target one hospital. The paradox of this is that the hospitals that do this better in the short term and report the data look worse than the hospitals that are often slacker and don't collect the data at all because they don't know. Ignorance is bliss. The exact number of infections in Australia is unknown, but estimates run to hundreds. Since 1994, when the first case appeared at Melbourne's Austin Hospital, almost all major hospitals have been hit. Three weeks ago, the Royal Perth Hospital reported 19 cases. It had to set up a special isolation unit. This is what it looks like. Vancomycin resistant enterococci, VRE for short, is so contagious and hard to treat, hospitals are forced to take extraordinary precautions. The woman who died at Canberra Hospital was allowed only one nurse to take care of her to limit the risk of contamination. Even after her death, the threat of infection to others continued to pose a problem. Every part of her room had to be scrubbed, including the walls. This is a germ that hangs around on telephones, on uh, the bed rails, on the doorknobs, so you have to have scrupulous cleaning at the end, otherwise the bug can persist. Hospitals use vancomycin as the antibiotic silver bullet to fight infections when all else fails. 
As a wonder drug, it was overprescribed in large amounts, both by hospitals and general practitioners. And this is where the problem started. Because of its overuse, the bacteria built up an immunity to it, creating the superbug VRE. I think there's an expectation in this community that if you're sick, there is a tablet to make you better. I think it can be lazy doctoring because the easiest thing is to give somebody a tablet and get them out, you know, and so you can see the next patient. The death of a patient involving bacteria infection is a grim reminder of life before antibiotics. Until the discovery of penicillin in the middle of the last century, patients died with wounds that couldn't be healed. Now, because of antibiotic misuse, it's happening again. The fear is that antibiotics will become worthless. So no shaking shivers or chills or anything? No, no, okay. no. That's all gone. Yeah, Did anybody else in the family get sick? Dr Peter Collignon, head of Canberra Hospital's Infectious Diseases Department, accepts that the medical profession should take its share of the blame. But he increasingly believes it's not entirely responsible for creating VRE. Humans aren't the only ones capable of developing antibiotic-resistant bugs in their system. When they're fed antibiotics, animals can too. When you look at it, you can see the same classes of antibiotics are used in animals as in humans, and we know from overwhelming evidence, particularly in Europe, that if you do that in animals, resistant bacteria develop, they come across the food chain, and they can make people sick. Australia is one of the biggest consumers of agricultural antibiotics in the world. Antibiotics are fed to lamb and beef in feedlots, pigs in intensive farming and chickens. The antibiotics help growth and also keep down disease. Every year Australia consumes 700,000 kilos of antibiotics, three quarters over 500,000 kilos in agriculture. A link between VRE in humans and VRE in animals has been proved in European studies, but never in Australia. Five years ago, the John Hunter Hospital in Newcastle produced the first evidence. In the men's medical ward, one of the John Hunter's patients appeared to have developed a resistance to vancomycin. Many people carry VRE in their bodies and never suffer any illness. But when they're sick and given strong antibiotics like vancomycin, which kills all other bacteria, VRE flourishes and takes over. Doctors couldn't understand how the hospital patient could have contracted VRE. He had no history of vancomycin use, and it seemed unlikely that he picked up the infection from the hospital. We screened the entire ward and found two other individuals who were also carrying this same strain, and those individuals had had some contact whilst, whilst they'd been in hospital. So it was an infection control issue for us, which uh, uh, really led us to implementing quite stringent uh, isolation. As the doctors struggled for answers, they began looking in unusual places for the source of the mystery infection. It was just possible that it had come from something the patient had eaten. They remembered the European studies and wondered if it could have come from local produce. Instead of calling in further medical opinion, they called in the local Department of Agriculture. The Hunter is quite a rural region. Uh, uh, these patients weren't from country areas, but uh, we were aware that um, there was evidence of transmission through the food chain even then. And uh, so we, we did persuade the Agricultural Department to cooperate with some uh, surveys. For the next 10 weeks, teams of agricultural department vets began scouring local farms, taking manure samples from cattle and poultry in a bid to track down the mysterious bug. Initially, 40 farms were keen to take part in the study. <laughs> 